Good morning, City of Refuge Church congregation, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Happy, 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 happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there. We love the Lord and we thank God for you participating with us this morning in-house and in social media land. I am Bishop Curtis Alexander, the founder and singer pastor of the City of Refuge Church. And we just thank you for worshiping with us and participating with us this morning. Today is May 14th. We thank you for joining and watching and participating. Saints, this morning we're talking about honoring thy mothers. Again, happy, happy Mother's Day. Honoring thy mother. My scripture text this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 31, verses uh, 10, 29 through 30. And with that, let's have a word of prayer. Father God of heaven, we come boldly before your throne of grace this morning, worshiping you, honoring you, praising you. We thank you for the mothers that are out there, Father God. We ask that you would bless them, and we ask that you also sit with us now and become our holy guest as this time does become divine. It is in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we do pray. We all can say amen and amen. Saints, the summary this morning is a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Honoring mothers on Mother's Day. A woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Honoring mothers on Mother's Day, of course. That's what today is all about. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. You see, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 through 9, which I didn't give Pastor Jim, but we're going to read it just the same. The fear of the Lord is, beginning, is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 8 of chapter 1 of Proverbs says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Proverbs 22, verse 6 is a very familiar passage of scripture. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We're going to be reading a lot of scripture this morning. Amen. In the short time that we are assembled together. But it all makes sense and all has to do with honoring thy mothers. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 through 3. Children obey your parents in the Lord. I think when we read that scripture we tend to leave out in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. Can everybody say with promise? with promise? That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Again, happy Mother's Day to ladies and to gentlemen as well. Happy Mother's Day. My first question is, how old are you? 120 years old, or are you over 70 years old? The reason why I'm asking those two questions is because... The Bible talks about age. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. You see, Moses was exactly 120 years old when he died. And the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7, that Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. Seventy years, you might ask. But in Psalms, chapter 90, verse 10, the days of our lives are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they are eighty years. You see, why am I asking how old you are to a bunch of people out there this morning on this Mother's Day? Because it has to do with the promise of the Lord. A promise based on honor. Exodus chapter 20, 
verse 12 says, Honor thy father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You see, today we are here to worship the Lord for his promises and to give honor to mothers on this Mother's Day. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10, 29, and 30. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Many daughters, verse 29, have done virtuously, but thou ex excellest them all. Favor. I'm going to see if we have that. Okay. Is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praise. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Saints of God, we have to fear the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, as I stated earlier from Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 8 of Proverbs chapter 1. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about your neck. Today we honor mothers, right? Amen. Let us look at some of the mothers of the Bible and examples we can learn from them. Number one. There's two, Mary and Elizabeth, obedience to the Lord for his purpose. The, mo the two most highly known and reverend mothers of the Bible, mother of Jesus is Mary and mother of John the Baptist was Elizabeth. They were obedient to the Lord as God-fearing women. Amen. Number two, Salome, the mother of John and James, Matthew chapter 20, verse 21 and 23. Read that at your own leisure they were ambitious in humility and had servanthood, wanted the best for her children and had good intentions. And even though rebuked by Jesus, still, she still continued to serve him. Protection, Jochebed's, uh, Moses' mother, in, in, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 3, a, a mother's love shown in protecting her child, creating the basket, hiding Moses, then was able to nurse and nurture him in the Lord until he was about seven years old. Was a great influence in his life. You see, train up a child. Jacobet did that. Dedication. Hannah, Samuel's mother. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. She prayed for her son and promised that his life would be dedicated to the Lord. She kept her promise of dedication. And at age three, gave Samuel back to the Lord for his service. Training. Eunice and Lois, mother and grandmother, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Train up a child. Timothy was taught by his mom and grandmom in the ways of the Lord. You see, saints of God, we are to teach our children in the ways of the Lord. Sarah, mother of Isaac, used by the Lord in an old age. Hmm. It was a joy for her, made her laugh. Isaac means laughter. How many 80 or 90 year old women are ready to have a baby these days? Sarah was that old. Prayers, Ishmael's, Mother, Hagar, Genesis chapter 21, verses 16 through 18. Hagar was sent off with Ishmael after Sarah gave birth to Isaac. Hagar called out to the Lord to spare her son, and the Lord did. Love, two mothers standing before Solomon, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 26. The true mother was willing to give up the child in order to let it live. A mother's love is sacrificial, even if it means giving up her child to another. You see, triumph. A mother and daughter 
Matthew chapter 20, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 15, verses 25 through 28. A mother's faith was rewarded in the healing of her daughter. You see, saints, these are all examples of mothers in the Bible. There are many more than discussed here today. But the one thing all these mothers have in common is their fear and reverence for the Lord. You see, today we honor our mothers. Blessed are they who fear, honor, and reverence the Lord. Amen? Amen. All of these mothers had influence over the lives of their children. We, too, have influence over not only our children, but those whom we come in contact with every day. Our influence is important to those around us, saints of God. There are many who come to us, to each of us, every day for our support, our input on situations in their lives. Absolutely. I am a supervisor of 10 women. I have 11 employees, and they come to me every day asking for support, prayer, in their lives of everything that they're going through. They are looking for our knowledge to help them in their everyday lives. We must make the right impact on the lives of others so that they might also come to the knowledge of the Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that again. We must make the right impact on the lives of others so that they might also come to the knowledge of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Thanks of God. I want to leave you with this this morning. I told you it was going to be brief. It is brief this morning because we're, 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 we're extending the knowledge about honoring thy mothers on this Mother's Day. But I want to say thank you to all mothers for your sacrifices in the lives of your children. And it may not be biological children. It might be adoptive children, spiritual mm -hmm. children, stepchildren. But thank you, mothers, for the sacrifice in the lives of your children. Let us ta all take the example of a godly mother that we just so graciously learned about and talked about this morning and give proper influence to those around us. Again, happy Mother's Day. We thank God for all mothers and fathers who is standing in the gap. But we thank God for, for mothers this morning. We want to honor them on this day that we celebrate as Mother's Day. But never forget, moms, saints of God, never forget to fear, honor, and reverence the Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to turn it now over to Pastor Jim to do the invitation and offering, and I will be with you yet again. All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers throughout the world. I want to acknowledge four extremely special mothers in my life. My lovely sister-in-law, Jean, Tremendous mother, absolutely giving. She blessed me tremendously last week. Jean, thank you. My forever sister, Patricia, I want to wish you belated birthday. Happy belated birthday. You know how bad I am with birthdays, so I am sorry. Happy Mother's Day. Thirdly, to my amazing, wonderful wife, Chi, happy Mother's Day. Wish you could be here. And lastly, but not least, I will say on the record, the most 
amazing, forgiving, loving mother in the world, Mary Dembski. Mom, I sit here as a pastor now, and I think if it wasn't for you and the Lord, I would not be here. She stood by me through thick and thin, never once turned her back on me. So, Mom, I'm forever grateful. I can think back to the driveway, having a catch, because Dad was sick, and me throwing 85, 90 mile an hour fastballs, and Mom getting a little perturbed, and throwing it right back at me. So, thanks, Mom. Now, on Mother's Day, I give you an imitation. There's two sides. You are either saved or you are not. It's simple as that. There's no in-between. You're saved or you're not. It's a lot like college if you went pass-fail. You either pass or you fail. But in life, when it comes to being saved, you don't get a second chance. That judgment day. And it's coming. Don't know when, but it is coming. I mean, you see what's happening in this world. It's totally upside down. But God's judgment is coming. Just to help with that, Romans 2. Therefore, you have no excuse. Oh, man. Every one of you who judges for in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself. Because you, the judge, practice the very same things. We know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourselves, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or... Do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. So if you are not saved, what you are doing, think of an infinite garbage bag. You are storing up wrath every minute of every day. But you have an opportunity by accepting this invitation. That garbage bag is not only emptied, it is destroyed, it is gone forever and you will escape God's wrath. So with that, and if you need further proof, I urge you to look at Proverbs 1, 24 through 31, and Romans 1, 18 through 32. And it's quite simple, everybody. It's not that complicated. You simply get on your knees. You repent. You tell God, Lord, I am sorry every mistake I ever made in my life and every mistake I will make. You run as far away from your sinful life and you accept Jesus Christ in your heart. And I promise you, God's word promises you that your life will not be the same. There will be changes in your life. So simply, Romans 10. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, not may be saved, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses, and you are now saved. So please, again, you hear me every single week urging you, do it today, Mother's Day 2023. Do not wait. Every single week, we have thousands of stories of people that may have made that decision or may not have. But guess what? They're not here today on Mother's Day.
So with that, you know, reach out to us. We'll help you on your journey. You know, it's the greatest gift that you can pass on once you're saved is to help lead someone to being saved, but also help them on that journey. Not going to be easy, but we're going to help you not give up. So I'd like to just pray for all the broken and lost people, for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who have fallen. You can turn back. In Jesus' name, we pray for the broken, the lost, the backslidden, that you turn to Christ now, today. Holy Spirit, touch these hearts, penetrate these hearts, and lead them to Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And now, it's real easy to talk about giving on Mother's Day because mothers have, they have set the ultimate example for us when it, to, when it comes to giving. I mean, just the very fact that they went through maybe an hour or 24 hours of labor to That's bring right, us right. into this world. So to all the mothers, again, thank you. Acts 20, 32-35. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And you do it, you give... You give because it brings glory to God. You don't do it because it necessarily makes you feel good, although it does, especially when you help someone who's down. But that's the ultimate way to bring glory to God. You give. And we're not just talking about money. We're talking about each one of us has been given. I'm not even talking about spiritual gifts. Some of us are musically inclined. Some of us are artistic. Some of us are great orators. Some of us are mechanical. Every one of those gifts can be used to further the kingdom. So don't sell yourself short. You can be used, especially here at the City of Refuge. So again, giving is a sacrifice. In John 3.16, that's the ultimate act of giving. That's right. And if you're not familiar with it, for God loved the world that he gave his only son, That's right. that whoever believes in him should not perish and have eternal life. That's the ultimate gift. We're all, obviously, we're not going to be able to ever give a gift like that. But we've been given the ultimate gift. So now it's on us to pay it forward. That's right. And then my absolute favorite verse when it comes to giving, besides John 3.16, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. And in my Bible, it's called... A cheerful giver. Amen. How many people think of like going to the dentist when they hear about giving? The point is, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he decide, has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. So the key thing right there is it's up to you. It's between you and God. Like I say every week, if all you, you know, if you feel honestly in your heart of hearts that all you can give is a dime, you know what? That's between you and God, and whoever you give it to ought to be extremely grateful for that dime. If the Lord tells you to give a thousand, hey, more power to you. But again, 
If the Lord tells you, look, I've given you this gift. I want you to bless City of Refuge by whatever it is, playing the cello, playing the violin, singing, whatever. <laughs> so I'd like to go over how we've got several ways to give here at the City of Refuge Church, Tithely, Cash App, Venmo, Zelle. And if you want to send in a check or money order, P.O. Box 2054, Antioch, Tennessee, 37011. And if you'd like to text, you can text to 84576, keywords offering one, the number, or tithes one, again, the number. And I'd like to pray over our tithes and offerings. Lord Almighty, thank you that your promises are sure, that you are faithful. And thank you, Lord, that we can rely on you. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. Father God, please help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. Father, we pray you cause these, these seeds that we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Shine your glory upon us. Give us peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I will be wrapping up our Attributes of God class Saturday, 9.30 Central Time. We will finish up with the wrath of God. And with that, I will turn it back over to Bishop Curtis. Ooh, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Dembski. The wrath of God. I, everybody should join that class. <laughs> it's going to be an awesome time in the Lord. Pastor Dembski, as you see, will be doing the class on May the 20th, which is this Saturday at 930 so join him and um, with us on that day at 9.30 a.m. Links um, are on the screen, QR code. Uh, like I said, please join. That, that will be an awesome time in the Lord, especially to learn about the wrath of God. And if you have missed any of Pastor Jim Dimsky's class, The Attributes of God, you can go back and view on our website or their YouTube channel. Amen. At this time, we want to thank everybody for participating and worshiping with us. I'm going to let Pastor Jim come back up before we do the benediction and introduce our two new members that we have. Oh, okay. Amen. Right. And then I'll be right back. I have with us my daughters, Salam and Shalom, all the way from Zambia. They are now pretty much officially Tennessee residents. Yeah. So Welcome, ladies, and we look forward to having you here at the City of Refuge. Amen. Yeah, right? That's perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put him on the spot. Amen. Yeah. You know, Bible says be a... You Put know, me on be the spot. <laughs> that season. We thank God for them coming and participating and being Tennesseans now. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord for that. Um, I'm sure it's a great kind of shock from Zen. <laughs> Zambia, but uh, we just thank God for them having a safe trip and uh, travel destination from Zambia, and uh, we know that they are in great hands with Elder Chi and Pastor Jim, so we thank God for them as well. Again, we want to say Happy Mother's Day to all. Everybody have a blessed, safe, and prosperous week, but before we go, let us stand and receive our benediction as we conclude our service this morning. Thank you, Lord. May, now may the grace of our Lord and Savior rest, rule, and abide henceforth, now and forever. You're coming up in your lying down, in your labor, and in your leisure until that day when there is no dawn and no sunset. We love you. God loves you more. Have an awesome, have a blessed, have a prosperous week. Join us live in person next Sunday, 9.50 a.m. Central Standard Time. Elder Roger Wells will be bringing the message next week. Be blessed. 
Tell somebody that you love them. And remember, God loves you more. Remember to honor the Lord and honor mothers today. Amen. Be blessed.